Hello and welcome to this presentation on individualistic theories of criminality. Today I'm going to look at the psychological theory of Hans Eysenck and we're then going to evaluate its effectiveness. Now before we start I should point out that um, according to the Weijack syllabus and the textbook Eysenck is a psychological theory but we've also looked earlier on at the theories of Freud and Bowlby and to all intents and purposes they too are psychological even though they are down as being psychodynamic in the um, in the textbook and in the syllabus but bear that in mind I think you can lump Isenk, Freud and Bowlby all together as being psych uh, psychological but psychodynamic only Freud and Bowlby so without further ado let's continue so just a recap again we know that individualistic theories of crime um, hold that crime is caused by individual differences based on personality types or experiences that people have. And so they're arguing that the individual's psychological makeup is the root cause of crime and how they have developed that psychological makeup, be it childhood mainly. Uh, so we're going to look at Isenk in this, um, in this uh, presentation, Hans Isenk. And his psychological theory is based on the assumption that criminals and non-criminals differ on the basis of their personality. So it's rooted in personality. And I think would argue that a criminal behaviour is a result of your nervous system that affects your ability to learn and adapt to the environment. So without further ado, let's have a look at his theory. So... Isenk thinks that um, your personality, obviously based on biological factors, and he argues that individuals will inherit our nervous system genetically from our parents, and our nervous system affects our ability to learn and adapt to the environment. So his key idea is that basically we, all humans, are pleasure seeking. We're hedonistic at heart. And people that steal and use violence, so criminals, people who break the law, do it because it's pleasurable to them. And Isenk argues that those that don't commit crime have a conscience which opposes this hedonistic tendency. And he thought that the conscience was a conditioned fear response. So I don't commit a crime because I'm scared of the consequences. I'm scared of what happened to me. I'm scared of what others might think of me. I might be scared of what my parents think of me. But those who do commit crime, criminals, haven't built up that good conscience. They haven't been conditioned to do that. They've inherited a nervous system, personality, which is resistant to the conditioning that means they gain that conscience. So. Isenk argued that your personality is made up of three distinct factors. The first one is how introverted or extroverted you are. The second is how neurotic or stable you are. And then how psychotic you are. So um, these are known as P for psychoticism, N for neuroticism and E for extroversion. Pen. P-E-N. And let's look at extroversion first. So extroverts, typically they're outgoing, they're sociable people who seek stimulation. And because of this, I think believes they're more likely to be ri uh, take risks and they're more likely to be thrill seekers. And I think says they are this way because they've inherited an under aroused nervous system. And so because they're under aroused, uh, the nervous system is under aroused, they seek stimulation to get aroused on. That stimulation comes from the environment around them. Introverts, on the other hand, lie completely at the other end of the scale. They're quiet, they're reserved, and they're already over aroused. The nervous system is over aroused, so they don't need that sensation and stimulation. So you look here. Here are some of the personality traits linked to um, extroversion and introversion. Interestingly, introverts apparently tend to be cat people, whereas extroverts tend to be dog people. But there you go. You can look at these at your leisure. 
When we get to the neuroticism versus stability scale, character, uh, personality, whatever, neuroticism is shown by characteristics such as anxiety and emotional instability. A stable personality, you're much more calm, you're much more even-tempered. And I think thought that neurotics, um, when we all have a fight or flight response, so that is linked to our sympathetic nervous system, which is activated quickly when we're encountered with something new, something dangerous. It releases adrenaline, it increases heart rate, and that fight or flight response kicks in. The parasympathetic nervous system, that's the one that brings you back down again. That's the one that calms you down. Now, I think things, we've all got the fight or flight response. We've all got a sympathetic nervous system that releases adrenaline that raises heart rate. But a neurotic, their parasympathetic nervous system, they calm down slower. So to give you an example, um, I often as a teacher have to um, give assemblies, etc. Now, when I first started giving assemblies, my first ever assembly, I was a, a little bit nervous. Now, I am reasonably extrovert, so whilst I may have felt my heart fluttering, my um, heartbeat would have been uh, raised, I might have felt a little surge of adrenaline. When I got up the stage and started, my parasympathetic nervous system calmed me back down, and after five, ten seconds, I was absolutely fine. Now, a neurotic, if you're high on the neuroticism scale, you'd have all those symptoms. The difference would be, once you're up on stage, that parasympathetic nervous system is not calming down. So you remain in a state of fight or flight up there on stage talking to everyone and keep remaining nervous. You don't relax, you don't calm down, you don't get into it. So your neurotic would be the sort of person that gets very nervous before an exam and then can't calm down once they're in the exam. Whereas your extrovert might get a bit nervous, but then it's OK once they're in the exam. It's a, a little bit of a cod example, but I, I think it gets the, the, the message across. So for ISENC, criminality is going to be linked to that inability for the parasympathetic system to come down. And his final link was psychoticism. And that was a later addition to the model. And psychoticism, we've looked at this in some other PowerPoints as well, characterised by cold, aggressive, antisocial and hostile behaviour. And the beauty of Einstein's theory is that a person's level of extroversion, your E level and your neuroticism level, your N level, uh, N level can be measured using a simple pencil and paper questionnaire such as the EPQ which doesn't stand for the extended project qualification which some of you may be doing for A level uh, well it does but uh, in, in this case it's ISENC's personality questionnaire and basically what you do is you do um, about 57 odd questions and they allow you to give you a score where you can base your introversion versus extroversion and your stability to neuroticism. Usually they're on a scale of zero to 24. All my classes will have done this. Um, I find that I am about 17 on the extroversion scale, so I'm quite high on extroversion. But when it comes to stable, nicely, I'm a two, so I'm very low for stable. So I would be in this quartile of the uh, chart. But you can look up ISENC's EPQ questionnaire. There's loads of them online and you can do them yourself and you can work out where you lie on the scale. So well, how does this link to criminality? Well, I think argues that people who score, who score high on extroversion and neuroticism do not condition well. That means they don't learn society's rules and social norms easily. And at the same time, they don't respond well to punishment. Therefore, these personality types would be more common, I think, believes, in criminal populations. And I think also believes that these people would also score, these criminals will score high on psychoticism. So he believed that the criminal personality was high on P, E and N, high on the pen scale, psychoticism, extroversion, neuroticism. So when you're, when you're talking about I think, make sure you are referring to P, E, N as his criminal type. So high psychoticism, high extroversion, 
and high neuroticism. And I've put a picture of the Joker here who in the Batman films is definitely that criminality personality high in all three, P, E and N for want of a better example. And I've also put up here just some of the character traits that are linked to high psychoticism, high extroversion, high neuroticism. And you can sort of see how some of these may lead to the criminal personality, possibly. And again, you can pause, look at these at your leisure. And other studies appear to back up ISENC's work, at work to some extent. So Rushton and Christ John in 1981 compared PEN scores with self reports of delinquency in school children and students. And those who reported higher levels of delinquency also scored high on PEN. So that would bear out ISENC's theory. However, it's also true to say that studies of official delinquency, i.e. comparing com uh, convicted offenders with non-offenders, don't produce such clear-cut results. And Farrington et al. in 1982 looked at 16 studies of the relationship between PEN measures and criminal convictions. And interestingly, they found that in the majority of cases, offenders scored high on P and N, but not on E. So it may be that actually your criminal type is not P, E, N, it's actually P, N, psychotic, neurotic, and not so much the extrovert. And I'm going to explain why that might be the case in a minute. So. Holling in 1989 also notes a similar pattern of findings that offenders generally score higher on P and N, but not necessarily higher on E scores. So maybe it's not P E N, maybe it's P and N. Now, it's not clear why the relationship between E and offending is so inconsistent, but one possibility is that when you're measuring extroversion, when you're measuring that E scale, it's actually measuring two distinct things. It's measuring sociability, your ability to get on with people, how well you interact with others. And it's, in, in, and it's measuring impulsiveness. Now, interestingly, impulsiveness would be associated with criminality. However, sociability may not necessarily. So it may be that actually uh, um, the E score isn't so important because it's measuring two things. If you had an E and you're looking at the impulsivity within the E score, then that may have a link to criminality, but the sociability may not. So let's evaluate. Strengths, well, the theory is useful in describing how some measurable tendencies could increase a person's risk of offending. And ISENC predicts that high PEN scores lead to criminality and, of course, some studies support his predictions. The offenders do generally tend to be extrovert, neurotic and psychotic. Definitely psychotic and neurotic. However, there are limitations. Um, so Farrington et al. don't agree about the E scores. They show that prisoners were N and P but not E. The E scale, as I said, may be measuring two separate things, the impulsivity and sociability. So offenders score high on impulsiveness. They lack self-control, but not on sociability because they're loners. And evidence on prisoners does show a correlation between personality type and criminality. But that doesn't prove that personality type causes criminality. It could be the other way around. For instance, being in prison might make you neurotic. So it, one comes before the other, whereas I think it's flipping the other way around. You're neurotic, so you end up in prison, but it could be you end up in prison, so you become neurotic. And so finally, on to our final slide with our last two limitations, and these uh, certainly are quite key. So what you could also say is, the, the convicted offenders on whom ISENC's theory is based might not be typical of offenders as a whole because um, less impulsive offenders, your low neurotic offenders, um, may be more likely to avoid getting caught 
Um, so therefore, they haven't been caught. They don't appear in the criminal population. And that skews the findings the wrong way. So that might be worth thinking about because the less impulsive, low N offenders are less likely to be caught. And finally, um, you can say, well, I sent used a self-report questionnaire, which may not be may not produce valid reports. I, I do the I sent uh, questionnaire with my students in class, and it's perfectly possible so that some of those may big up their answers or underplay their answers. So it's possible that people may be li may be lying when they ask about themselves, and there's no way of really um, ironing out that potential flaw. So that's always an issue with a self-report questionnaire. So hopefully that all makes sense and I'll see you again for my next presentation. Goodbye. <laughs>